Hello, and welcome once again to Beetle University. I am Professor Moptop, and here at Beetle U, we spend a fair share of time talking about Beatles music and how they were able to record such consistently new and innovative sounding songs. And while there would be no Beatles without the Beatles themselves, they may not have evolved the way they did if it wasn't for one extremely pivotal player in the story of the Beatles, and that is George Martin. I'm not one for nostalgia, really, and I don't normally look back, but um, 30 years have passed, more, since I started in 1962 with the Beatles, and I think I've got over my inhibitions now. As a group of relative novices, the Beatles met Martin in 1962, and he quickly clicked with them, developing them and helping them create the best music that they were able to make with the resources available. But before there was the Beatles, George Martin had a rather accomplished career on his own. Growing up with a keen interest in music, Martin served in a non-combat role for the Royal Air Force taking his veterans grant to enroll in the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, where he continued his study of piano, also learning the oboe from Margaret Elliott. She was the mother of Jane Asher. After graduating, he briefly worked for the classical music department of the BBC, being hired by EMI as an assistant to Oscar Prius, the head of one of their subsidiary labels, Parlophone. Martin immediately proved his worth as a valuable ear to have around, producing such records as Jack Parnell's White Suit Samba from 1951, the sound effects of the science technology, described as Guggle Glub Guggle, were designed by sound editor Mary Haberfield, although she went uncredited for many years. These extremely clever sounds, which were achieved with tubas and bassoons, were set to music by Jack Parnell, who would go on to be the head of the music department of The Muppet Show in the 1970s. Movie scriptwriter T.E.B. Clark released it as a single, and it was produced by George Martin. Being able to think of music as not just traditional instruments, making traditional sounds, was one of the qualities that would help the Beatles and Martin work so wonderfully together. A song that the Beatles were fans of was also produced by Martin in 1955. That was Eve Boswell, a female pop vocalist who had a song called Pickin' a Chicken. Come to the barbecue and sit by my side. We couldn't choose a better night if we tried. Can't you imagine what a thrill it will be? Pickin' a chicken with me. Pickin' a Chicken was number nine on the British Hit Parade, and it was based on a South African tune with words added by Patty Roberts. An unusual combination of elements merged together in record by George Martin. The individual Beatles were all fans of Goonie comedy, even before meeting one another. Ladies and gentlemen, Unchained Melody! Yeah! And they were all very excited to find out that their new producer was the same guy who did such records as Peter Sellers' Unchained Melody. and Spike Milligan's Wormwood Scrubs Tango. And while it is greatly reported that the Beatles introduced Martin to the world of rock and roll, in his own way, his music may have helped influence them long before they even knew it. In 1957, as the skiffle craze was continuing to gain momentum, Martin was exposed to the newer sounding music as he oversaw the recording of the Vipers skiffle group recording Don't You Rock Me, Daddy-O. Don't You Rock Me Daddy-O was a retelling of Uncle Dave Macon and his Fruit Jar Drinkers 1927 standard, Sail Away Ladies. Martin's work with the Vipers, who were untrained although highly skilled and very enthusiastic, was valuable experience when it came time for him to work with the Liverpool band called The Beatles. The 
guys were familiar with Rock Me Daddy O, although likely it was a Lonnie Donegan number for them. He also recorded the song during 1957. Me and my brother was going to town Sing away lady, sing away Riding a billy goat and leading a hound Sing away lady, sing away Don't you rock me daddy oh Don't you rock me daddy oh Don't you rock me daddy oh Don't It's also extremely likely that the Beatles were familiar with the Vipers version of Maggie May, a Liverpool folk song about a thieving prostitute Oh Maggie, Maggie May They have taken her away And she never walked down my street anymore for the Let It Be album, they would do a version of their own. George Martin had developed his own methods and standards for records he was affiliated with and he was able to very effectively help create serious or straight records, as well as fun and interesting humorous ones, showing the same care and concern to the songs of a novelty nature, as well as those of a more serious nature. Throughout his career, Martin would treat each of his sessions the same, and his brand of excellence was unmistakable to the ear. And as I continue to search through the record vaults of the world, I will report back from time to time on some of the other things that George Martin did before there were Beatles. In my book, the Beatles were the greatest performers and writers ever. Until then, class dismissed. I am Professor Mopcup. A Mop Pop production. Awesome.